Hello everyone, my name is David, and today I'm going to be continuing my analysis and review of The Hunger Games, Chapter 12. Um, I may mix it up and actually just do a video of me talking, since it's easier to edit, or not, you don't even realize to edit at all, but we'll see. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is how, in, like, the, the tension that's building up and this, these few chapters are incredible. Like it actually makes you feel like this is a life or death thing. It's, it's actually makes you feel like this is actually intense. It's not something just like, oh, okay, people are dying, whatever. This is like you're actually like, holy shit, some real stuff is going on right now. So I really like that. Um, uh, so the quick, a quick recap. She's basically, um, she just found out Peta, um, you know, was the one that killed that girl. District Aid and how they're forming a tribute and they're, or they're forming an alliance and then she eventually uh, finds um, uh, water and that's pretty much all that happens like literally in the chapter um, but that's it's really not about like what happened in the chapter that's very significant um, so Let's talk about what actually happens and analyze the things that happen. Um, okay, so I uh, notice if you notice something, if you notice uh, uh, Peta, you know she's looking at him, and there's some interesting details. There's a, a his face is swollen with bruises, and there's a bloody bandage on one arm. Um, so and it looks like he's limping. Now it's it's weird, wouldn't you think that Peta people? If your first reaction is Oh, Peta is a traitor. Then listen, Peta is clearly not a traitor. Okay, just because Peta decided to go kill a girl with a bunch of creativity doesn't mean he's a bad guy. <laughs> I'm just joking, but yeah, it is kind of fucked up that if he actually did kill her. But um, but I don't think that Peta is a bad guy here. And the only reason why I say that, I know it looks really bad for Peta, and it's probably not fair for me to defend Peta's actions after I've bashed Katniss so much. But let me just say that there's there's a qu interesting detail about how he's swollen and basically wounded. Now you have to ask yourself, why would the career tributes take Peta as an ally? I mean, why would they do that? I mean, to them, District Twelve is just a laughing stock. But you know, why would they ever even consider uh, keeping Peta around unless it was to use him for something? And since you know Peta is from District Twelve, maybe he's actually being used to um, find Katniss. Because that would make sense. Katniss is, you know, they, they were together all the time. It made it have that flirty feel. And maybe Haymitch foresaw all this. Maybe he was like, you know what? If I have PETA form an alliance with um, the careers, then, um, you know, they won't kill him. Maybe Haymitch didn't tell uh, PETA to form an alliance, but maybe the careers actually decided to keep uh, PETA alive simply because it made, uh, like, Make it like, oh well, if Peta and them form an alliance, then uh, you know then we can get to we can get to Katniss. But if they really knew that Peta and Katniss weren't really like a team, they probably wouldn't even bother with Peta. They'd just kill him. You know, there'd be no reason to keep Peta alive if it wouldn't. They, he wouldn't have any benefit. But since they look like a good team, it may actually benefit them. So that's probably why he kept them alive. And I wonder if he actually only was forced to kill that girl and he didn't want to. But it's interesting. Um. So that's why I th that's the first thing that's shot to my mind. Um, it's not just because I'm a, a fanboy. Um, but yeah, I really liked uh, how that, if that's Hamish's strategy, that's really badass. Um, I, it probably is. And I, I like how Katniss is like determined to kill him now. Like he's, She's just so pissed off at PETA. It's understandable. Um, although I would question his motives, which is what she does, you know, because it doesn't make sense for him to do that all of a sudden. You know, I mean, like, why play the whole I'm your friend thing if he's clearly in a pack to kill her? You know, I mean, the best way to do that is actually to form an alliance with Katniss and then betray her, not automatically try and kill her. Then what was the point of making her think that you like her? I mean, that doesn't do anything. Like, that would just be like, it'd be like trolling. It's like, ha, oh, I actually don't like you, but that wouldn't benefit him at all. I mean, you know, he might as well have just said I hate you from the start if that was really was his plan. Um... Uh, so yeah, apparently, um, 
you know, she is thinking about it. You know, maybe she's he's saving that information because it'll keep him alive. You know, it could just be that Heyman, sh- whatever. Maybe it was just a coincidence. But here's the thing I want to talk about. The most interesting thing that I talked about this before, the birds and the warning call. The warning call they give, I'm telling you, is significant. It may not be. It may just be a random detail, but I doubt it. it it's interesting how they give out a, a, a specific pitch. And it is it is a warning call. It's a, it's a single note, and it's the ones that tell um, people that a hovercraft is about to appear. Now, I'm telling you that the rebels program the birds to do this, you know, train them, whatever. Or there's some kind of significance with birds and maybe capital technology. Hmm, I don't know. That sounds interesting, right? Or not. Maybe it's just, you know, birds just have that, you know, sixth sense. You know, just like most animals, they can tell when a tsunami is coming, so... I don't know. Could be something like that, but I don't know. Maybe they could. She could definitely expand on that. You know, she. There's no reason to introduce birds like the mockingjay and all these other things if they're not significant at all. Um. Uh. So I highlighted a few things, and I'm looking at them why I highlighted them. And I realize that the reason why I highlight some of these things in this book, and I don't, it's because the wording isn't really proper. I mean, look, I don't think Suzanne Collin is a shitty writer. I think as far as storytelling and making, I mean, it's really hard to make a character, uh, a character, a believable character. Because, you know, you can always have the typical bad guy, the typical good guy, and they have no real motives. But you can understand Katniss. And even though I hate on Katniss, I think she is a great, amazing character. Everything about Katniss just makes sense. Her name is, her like, the actual flower Katniss is like a dead a dead similar symbolic reference to who Katniss is, you know, having deep roots, being, you know, born in the mud, you know, that's really excellent. And, you know, Gail, you know, I don't know if she tried to pun on his name, too, about how Gail's like, you know, you know, a twirl of wind or whatever, kind of like, you know, I don't know. So it's kind of cool that she did that. And I think the characters are believable and they're likable and it's really hard to make someone like a character. So I really think that the char- the author is great. Now, now that I said that, let me tell you why I think she's bad in a different sense. Only in the technical writing part, not the not the actual, you know, the juicy good part of writing, but just the technical wording and mis you know, misspelling something and grammatical errors. She uh she says things that I just don't think are they just don't they could be said in a different way. And it doesn't have to be said in such a complicated way. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I'm just, you know, I go to college, but, you know, I guess that doesn't mean that I necessarily have, you know, great uh, speech and vocabulary. But, you know, to me, it's like there's no reason to say something like that. It wouldn't make sense for a poor person that's 16 years old to say something like that, you know. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll give examples. Um, this one wasn't really this. That was the one I was talking about. But anyway, sorry, I went off on a rant about that. Uh like this, uh, the audience will have been beside themselves. I don't know what that means. If anyone else knows what that means, I, I don't know. Please explain to me. I, I mean, sometimes she says things that I just don't get it. So then I found out that the cameras that actually keep an eye on them aren't like set up. Like at first I thought they were like surveillance, like they were just set up in random places. But the camera, I guess, actually moves around. Um, like you know, something that like you know, just focuses, you know, and they just focus. They uh, hunt out the. Um, the players, and I was wondering maybe if Katniss, maybe it would be a good idea to look for the cameras. If they're noticeable, then you can kind of tell if there's a tribute around, you know, you know, you know yeah. Okay. Um, um, so then we learned about how Claudius uh, Temple Smith is probably talking about um, the things. And this is how I think they could do this in the movie, because you're thinking, you know, it's kind of hard to do a movie and have thoughts and stuff. You know, in the movie, you know, it's kind of like, it's not really a good format to just have her thinking. And then I thought this in my head, oh, well, well, while she's doing stuff, it's kind of distracting, you know. Um, and it's it's not, it just seems kind of, like, you can do it in a book really well, but you really can't do that in a movie. Um, the thoughts, the inner thoughts of the character while they're doing things. But the way they could pull this off is they can actually just show the commentary with Claudius uh, Templesmith and have him talk about the things that are going on right now and just have commentators talk about how Katniss is doing something. That way you don't have to show her in her thoughts because she even says, you know, the Capitol's probably doing this and right now, you know, the, the you know, whatever, the, the reaction to this. That way she, they don't, she doesn't have to say it out loud, you know, because if, if you just saw her in the movie, you just tilt her head and smile after PETA did all that, you know, it'd be kind of like, what, you know? Like, it may be kind of confusing to someone that never saw that for the first time, you know? I don't know. So, um, 
I think they could easily pull that in the movie. I think that's what they're going to do. Um, and they can also do the um, the the. Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, anyways, so anyway, she stumbles across her bag and she looks and she finds glasses that can that are sunglasses apparently, but they don't make it any. They don't uh, block out the sun at all, and she's like, oh, "It does something weird to my vision." So I'm curious to what that weird thing to her vision is. Maybe they're actually like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else you could see. But I don't know. Sorry, I'm, I'm just ranting. So that's interesting. And then this is funny about Katniss. Uh, right now she's struggling. Um, you know, she's trying to find out whether or not she has sponsors or not because she's like you know i haven't got you know they could easily send me water if they wanted to if i had sponsors but they don't and then she comes to a conclusion in her head uh i'm not sure actually let me make sure this is um okay okay and and she's wondering you know why exactly isn't haymitch sending me shit you know he could easily do that if he had uh you know if he could send stuff um (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry I'm taking so long. I'm just kind of rereading stuff because uh, it, it takes me a while to remember exactly what happens. But anyway, so right now she's... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you if you stopped watching the video because I'm doing this. I, I totally don't blame you. I just don't like editing, so I'm just going to do this, leave it in here. Anyway, what I'm saying is this. Uh, you know, she starts reminiscing on uh, Prim. She's pretty much given up. She's like, you know, it's okay to die here. Just like how it was in the rain that day when she was walking and she left her things there and she didn't even bother picking them up and she fell against the tree and was just like, I can die here. It's kind of like the same moment. And maybe they could do that in the movie. Like, it can go back to back. You know, it shows her sitting in the mud, you know, whatever. And it kind of shows her in the rain, you know, like back to back. And it's like the same concept. And then it, and maybe it shows her dad saying, like, as long as you can find yourself, you'll never die. Or you'll, you'll be able to uh, feed yourself. And then it can show you know, how she sees the mud and then the Katniss in the mud and she finds flowers in the mud because she knows that there has to be some kind of water if there's mud. So I, was, I thought that was a really cool scene and I think that, hey, you know, she could pull that off in the movie. That would be an excellent way of sh- shooting that scene in my opinion. Um, <laughs> and, and it's kind of funny that she was so excited to see mud. It's kind of interesting. And yeah, she's really getting dehydrated right now. She said that she's like fallen over pretty much you know, dying, and she, and what I was trying to say earlier when I was stuttering like a retard, uh, you know, she was wondering why Haymitch exactly had, hadn't sent them anything, she thought maybe there was water close, maybe that's why I didn't send anything, which makes sense, I don't know if I would actually come up with that conclusion, I'd probably just conclude that there are no sponsors, because I was like, well, if they're not sending anything, I don't see why not, and I guess that was pretty good thinking on her part. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, she basically finds water, she drinks, and then she goes to sleep and then she wakes up and then guess what she wakes up to? That's right. A wall of fire descending on her. So that's a really intense thing. Like, you know, you're expecting, okay, now she's basically just going to survive and we're going to read about her survival and this is where shit gets interesting. A wall of fire. So I'm really curious about that. Um, so yeah, this chapter was really great. And I probably, I think I'm missing something that I really want to talk about. But anyway... I don't know. So if anybody has thoughts about this or has, you know, different thoughts or disagrees with what I'm saying with or whatever, you know, let me know. We'll, we'll talk it out. But anyway, thank you very much. My name is David and have a good one.